Right, so now we're ready for the bit I think is the most fun part, is the colouring. Now we're not going to colour on the side with stamps, that's really important because your inks might melt this embossing powder and it would end up a horrible smushy, horrible black mess. So we're going to turn it over, work on the reverse side and we're going to start just putting colours down here. Now be bold, here's the thing. Um, I've got LV3, don't worry if you can't remember them, we'll find some way of getting them to you, so there'll be some reference somewhere. Right, just look, purple, I love purple, why not have a little bit there? I'm going to put a little bit of purple in here, but we might need to put some back in here. I'm using the chisel nib. You'll find that you use even less ink when you're working on acetate because it just glides over the surface. Let's put maybe a bit of that blue in. This is BT8. Don't know what it's going to look like. We'll soon find out. Yeah, it's going to look fine. I quite like it. All right. If you're not sure, just do it. You'll soon find out. Put a little bit of that in there as well. I like to, when I'm around doing a sky, try and get a little bit of the colour that's in the sky somewhere towards the base of the picture as well, just to balance it out. Now, the next one I'm going to use more of is a kind of a mid-group, mid-blue. I'm using TB3. Now, um, you'll find that when you're working on acetate, you really need the, the stronger colours to show up. Now, this is about the lightest of the colours that you're going to be able to see working on this on this picture because anything anything um, lighter than that just won't even you won't see it now I've gone through all the colors there see how they blended in you're going to get color on your pen but don't worry just it'll see how it just rubs off have a bit of Mina ready next to you and just scribble away if you want to keep cleaning the nib it's up to you but I'll just do it at the end because I want to drag a little bit of that color further down as well Okay, so we've got a good sky kind of thing going on there. But I want to work on some land as well. So let's put, let's be really bold and get this um, JG7 in the foreground. It's going to be a really strong, bluey kind of green. And I'm just going to make little fluffy kind of, make it look like a fluffy kind of um, hilly kind of thing here. You yeah, notice how the voice goes, because it's, it's a Sheena world. That'll do lovely there. Yeah, I've got a nice little grassy foreground there. Now, what I want is the colours ideally to be lighter as they go away, so that it's kind of like um, it's it's not just it's perspective. As colours go into the distance, they get lighter, and they get more kind of um, bluey as well. So I'm using now DG4, which is um, a kind of a more of a yellowy green than the one I've just used. And I'm just going ahead and creating another little hill type effect which will be further in the background you can if you want to think of the rule of thirds as well if you try and keep the colors like a third of the way down and not go further up it's good for balance you see we've got the tree and the third of the other of this side as well if that meant nothing to you and you're thinking I really don't care that's all fine and dandy too you don't even have to theft up pretend I never said anything Right, now, I th you could even add another little layer there. Now, I don't know how many colours I've grabbed from my set that would work. Let's see what this one's going to look like. There's another green. Oh, yeah, this is going to be nice. Okay, we'll do another little lighter kind of hill thing going on so that it looks like there's some distant green hills there as well. Lovely. And don't worry, because you can tidy all these things up later if you want to, you know, mess on with them. But I like that just lovely bold colour. Um, back to this mid blue and we'll just continue further down here where we've got the hills um, and don't worry about this if you think oh it's looking a bit streaky we're not going to worry about any of that kind of stuff either because in Sheena world we don't this is what it's like in Sheena world lovely ok so we'll continue with that now so we've got some really nice little kind of distant kind of hill things going on we've got foreground going on but what I want to do is I want to add some more colour to the foreground you see and the good thing is because they're um, spectrums and it's, it's solving ink when I put colour on here it will push this other colour away see how it's just pushing so I want to make it look like we've got nice little violety type flowers in, in the foreground and if you use the nib in different ways you'll get different kind of effects there you can have little clumps of heathery stuff or little you can even do little grassy bits if you want to have a bit play as well whatever you want to do it's all good so I've got some little texture bits going on little dots of this really strong pink because I want it to look really vibrant and pretty we're not going for realism here we're going for um, pretty and a suggestion of a, a realistic landscape So 
putting kind of like kind of fox gluey things going on there just by dotting the pen. This wasn't actually I hadn't planned this in the demo, I'm just playing now. These things can happen. Even on live TV. Those of you who know me will know this. But that's how it should be, isn't it? That's how crafting is. Now we've got the lovely little scene thing going on, but we want to now add some clouds and we want some highlights. This is where the blender pen is your friend. Um, I'm going to use, well let's use the little one, the, the broad, um, again, I'm going to dot in amongst where these these um, little lighter, these pretty colours are, because I want it to look like there's little highlights in there, maybe some little daisies in amongst that. So, I should have cleaned that before I started, and just keep going over the area and you'll find it'll get whiter and whiter. highlights on those little fox glovey bits as well and you've got just all this little prettiness going on down there and right the most important bit I want to do is show you how to do some clouds you've got the broad nib you're going to draw a circle big circle then you're going to move out and do a smaller circle and we'll move off the page because it'll look more natural and then let's move to the other side and do another circle and you don't have to really see where you stamp because that's on the other side, it's all protected. Clean the nib, go back over if you want it whiter and you'll find it'll come up cleaner. If you want to make it even brighter, have a bit of kitchen paper ready and just blot it. Now you won't see this well at the minute, let's do another one up here, you'll see this one better. Circle, circle, maybe another strip them out. Let's do another one there. And actually I quite like where you've got the shades, if you've got a lighter bit there, and then you've got like you can do a little highlight with it with the pen so you can just have a bit play with that and it looks like maybe the sun's catching it in some place I'm um, doing the one down here this is a really nice way of just having a play as well because it's a similar technique as I'm using on, on you know if I'm using just a, a watercolour card it's a similar thing if I'm doing just traditional painty stuff but it just works so easily with the, with the spectrums on the acetate Let's do some little drifty ones if they're in the distance here. And then and just a little bit of kitchen paper. Now at this stage you think, well, I'm not sure what I've got, but what you'll do is you'll get another piece of card, clean bit of card, and you will then get rid of the dirty piece, get rid of that. Pop that the other way around now, make sure it's dry, it's not just going to be quick. Not too close, blast with a heat tool. And then turn it over, and this is the fun bit because you go, whoa, I like it, it's so cheery. Or, what have I done? Um, and I'm just going to, what I do is I like to try and trim it together with a piece of cord. Now, another little trick here is if to make this easier, this little bit easier, is if you get one of those tape pens, the pink tape pens for Crafters Companion, do a little catch in each corner, it'll keep both of these bits together so it makes this part easier. But just for speed, I just want to trim this down a little bit and show you how it's going to look and then how you're going to pop it onto your card. So remember that little bit of tape in the corner of each one, just enough just to hold the acetate and everything together. Now what I'm thinking is, yeah I've got a branch you see here in the middle of nowhere, so I'm going to have to trim that a little bit closer because um, it kind of just, you don't want it to look like it's just a hover branch. You need to trim it so it looks like it's coming off the page. So we need it to, can you see what I mean? Yeah, so bear that in mind when you stamp and position your images at the first um, point of play. Oh. Right now, that should give you a better idea of what we've got, and then I'll talk you through how I finish the card. But this is the bit you really want to see. So, from that blank piece of acetate, we've now got a really pretty, sunny, cheery, happy place where I spend most of my time, if only in my mind. Okay. And the good thing is if you make any mistake, you want to change it, just go over with your pen again. You can go over the sky again and then put the clouds in again if you didn't like them. It's so forgiving. Um, and what I've done to finish the card is, moving along, I've trimmed, it's a different proportion to the one I showed you earlier. 
um, I've used a little bit of um, some small brads in the corner just to give that little bit of tape a little bit more help to keep them together. The matte paper, the matte card here, I wanted one that would fit um, exactly with the picture so I just used my spectrums on some Nina and just coloured around the side just enough so that I knew when I layered it up you wouldn't see it. And just a little sentiment again with a little bit of the edging with the spectrum around the side and I'm happy with that. It makes me smile. Here's another option. This is from the um, Stampin' Australia stamps using white embossing powder and just more of a purpley colour scheme so you can see how you can just have a bit play. And I thank you very much. So that was me, Sheena Douglas. If you want to know anything about anything I've used, anything Sh Sheena or moi, if you will, if you go to sheena.tv, you'll find my gallery and um, hints and tips and, and all kinds of things there. Thank you.